a Plaguelands Media production. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you another book review today. Now, um, I have been fascinated in uh, ancient history for a long, long time, going all the way back to uh, elementary school where I was really into like Aztec history and then as we moved on to high school, we started to learn about ancient Rome. Uh, in the 12th grade, I was learning about the Julio-Claudian emperors, um, reading textbooks, um, the Annals of Imperial Rome by Tacitus, to a lesser extent, Suetonius's The Twelve Caesars. And the Julio-Claudian emperors were a really fascinating um, period of time, at least in my personal opinion, where we had Augustus, Tiberius, Caligula, uh, Claudius, and Nero. So when I was browsing through Amazon and I stumbled across a book entitled Caligula Reincarnated, a novel of an immortal serial killer by Steve Peake, I thought, why not? I've never heard of this author, although he is quite prolific. Uh, he has written a number of books. As you can see at the end of this novel, this is all of the books that um, Steve Peake has written, like uh, excerpts from them. So I figured, sure, why not? I'll give this one a go. Ordered it a few years back. It's taken me a while to get around to it. But um, there are a few issues, not necessarily with the story or the writing itself, although I will go into that, but this is going to be one of the first um, read a fucking book people segments where I actually go into what is wrong with the actual physical copy of the book itself because it is really quite uh, interesting, stupefying. So, you know what? Let's just get into another episode of. So I usually do not do this with um, book reviews because most books that I read and review have editors, I guess, or aren't put together like this. But if you can just see the cover of Caligula Reincarnated, a novel of an immortal serial killer, notice anything weird, like everything is slightly off-center? And you've got this weird gap, but it gets better, people, because when you flip the book over to read the blurb, one of the most important parts of a book, if you're in a bookstore, you pick up a book, you want to read the back of it, well, you shit out of luck with this one, because it's just black fucking squares. I have no idea why this choice was made. But there you have it. Now, one more thing I do want to uh, address before I go into the actual review itself is the uh, spacing in the book. And the book itself doesn't have chapter titles. Instead, it has these uh, Spring 2012 aboard the Incitatus or whatever the fuck this ship is called, named after Caligula's horse. Okay, so instead of um, instead of chapter titles, you have like the year and the uh, and the season and where it's taking place. That's fair enough, but then I don't quite understand why if everything is taking place aboard the ship, why just keep having that? Why not just keep going with the chapters? Doesn't make any any sense why they spaced it this way and then when you get to the end of one of these things let me just find you an example just bear with me here this book is just spaced like garbage like okay here is the chapter and then this is the last page of the so-called chapter and then you have a huge space at the top and then it moves on to Prague, spring 2012. Like, there is no reason for this. It serves no purpose. I don't quite understand what the person was thinking who kind of put this book together. Um, and then 
the novel ends here, and you have about the author and samples of other novels, and then this is just some person writing about how good the author is, and then just chapters from the author's other books. Like, it's a complete waste of space, and I don't quite understand why it's there. I usually don't do this, but this one was particularly egregious, especially since I purchased this off Amazon, and this was what arrived. So... All right, let's get straight into the book review. So with all that aside, what is this book about? Well, this book is about the Emperor Caligula, who um, has had a spell cast on him by his advisor, a, an ancient Asian wizard. And whenever he dies, he is reborn into a new body. However, he doesn't have any of the memories of his former lives, so he pretty much has to start again. When whatever body he is reborn in becomes a teenager, that's when Caligula's soul, I guess, wakes up. And off they go. Now, this book starts with one of the most amazing openings to a horror novel, which is what effectively it is, that um, I have ever read. Basically, basically, it is a uh, black slave child in, um, what's the year, 1854 in St. Joseph, Louisiana. And he's going to meet some friends to go fishing down by the river. And then suddenly Caligula's spirit wakes up, realizes where he is, uh, realizes that the body that he is in is a poor person. Um, it's going to be very, very difficult for Caligula to um, work his way up to the wealth that he had accumulated when he was the living god in ancient Rome, the lifestyle that he is accustomed to. So in this child's body, he murders the child's two friends and then kills himself by drowning in a lake, waiting to be reborn into the next form, which was uh, an incredibly amazing way to open this book, and it immediately got me hooked. Unfortunately, it goes a little bit downhill from there, because then we are introduced to the main character. The main character is a woman called Sarah. Now, Sarah is a character that, for some reason, the author decided to give her every flaw imaginable. Bad relationship? Check. Health issues. She's got a brain tumor. Check. Um, does she have the soul of an ancient Roman merchant stuck inside her head? Check. Why not give her psychic powers? Check. I mean, fuck, Bella from Twilight was more believable than this bitch. Anyway. She is uh, like an advisor in um, a company that, that kind of helps larger companies, and she is trying to help out this, uh, this family. The, the patriarch of this company wants to break into the Chinese electronics market. The family thinks it's a bad idea, so she goes over all of the financials, and she realizes it is also a bad idea. So she's in New York for some meetings, while she's in New York, she visits a museum where there is a bust of Caligula. She feels compelled to touch the statue, and all of a sudden, bam, she has the soul of one of her dead relatives from ancient Rome, uh, a former merchant called Marcus, uh, stuck inside of her head. At first, she thinks she's going crazy. She goes to the meeting to meet with this family, and the voice in her head says, I know how you can help these people out and make a lot of money in the process. Uh, it's going to be really, really great. She thinks she's going uh, batshit crazy, but ultimately she listens to this voice in her head, uh, tells the patriarch of the company, listen, we'll talk later, I've got some ideas, and decides to fly back to her home. In the process, the voice inside her head introduces itself as Marcus, 
and tells her how he ended up in that statue. And then the, the story goes back to ancient Rome, where we find out that Marcus is an incredibly wealthy um, merchant who has just returned to Rome. Uh, he meets Caligula. Caligula is the emperor after having murdered his father Tiberius. Um, Caligula, I believe, reigned from 37 AD to 41 AD. Or it could be 31 AD to 47 AD. Anyway, it's around that time period. Um, Marcus's friends tell him, be very, very careful. Caligula is a fucking batshit crazy madman. Uh, one thing leads to another, and Marcus is invited to a feast in Caligula's palace. He tells his wife, you and our kid can't come to this thing. I have to go there. It's too dangerous. He goes um, after... When he first meets Caligula, he embarrasses him um, by betting against him and then ultimately winning the bets. So Caligula has this big feast and whatnot, and then invites Marcus down to the temple that he has built under the, um, under the palace. Uh, Marcus goes down to the temple and uh, Caligula talks to him and gives him some drugged wine. The wine is laced with um, a, a drug that's designed to give him a, an erection. Caligula chains him up, jerks him off, jerks himself off, drinks the semen in a cup, and this is all for this spell that the wizard uh, is casting to make Caligula immortal. The terms of the spell is that Marcus's spirit will be trapped inside of the statue, and as long as uh, the spirit is in the statue, Caligula can never die, and the only way to release the spirit is to have one of Marcus's ancestors touch it. Um, at this point, he measures uh, Marcus's dick with his own dick, decides that Marcus's dick is too big, and cuts it off. Whatever, it actually happens again later in the story, but that's just what happens. I'm not making this shit up. Um, Marcus is killed, and Caligula, Caligula then has Marcus's family killed. Um, but Marcus had a mistress when he was in Britain, and that mistress uh, survives, and hence we have Sarah now, who is the ancestor of Marcus. Hence, she touched the statue, Marcus um, is released, and Caligula can now be killed. Um, we also find out that one of Caligula's reincarnations was Jack the Ripper, because, you know, fuck it, why not? Let's just throw that one in there. Um, Caligula, at this point, it's the year 2012, Caligula has been reborn into the body of a Saudi prince. A rather weak Saudi prince who is an embarrassment to his family, so the family basically just give him a ton of money and a fucking super yacht and tell him, you know, don't come anywhere fucking near us. Uh, so, Caligula, there's also a, a thing about um, Caligula uh, in one of his um, incarnations building like a sex dungeon on the Isle of Capri. Uh, apparently, Capri was where Tiberius, um, Caligula's uncle, had a kind of a palace where Caligula grew up after his father Germanicus was killed. Um, so Caligula is drawn back to Capri, and in this case, uh, the super yacht um, is, is on the ocean um, out there, and Caligula, under the guise of Khalid, um, now kind of lures people to this super yacht to fucking torture them before kind of uh, killing them. He also has an assistant called Belknap. Belknap. Uh, is a former military interrogation specialist who was sexually abused by his father as a kid. Um, when he grows up, he finds he has weird sexual predilections, um, hunts his father down and rapes him in a car park of a bar and then murders him. Um, and Belknap basically is the guy who is getting all of Caligula's victims for him, luring them away, running his uh, official businesses, which are basically strip clubs in America, 
because, you know, why not? Um, at this point in the story, um, Sarah now believes uh, everything that Marcus has said, and they decide to go off and hunt down uh, Caligula by going through Interpol missing persons uh, data because Sarah is a data specialist. We are then introduced to Andrew and Rutger. Um, Rutger is uh, a very wealthy uh, businessman. His family, in fact, built the yacht that Caligula um, is on uh, at the moment, the super yacht, which Caligula has named after his former horse, which is uh, one of the ways that they work out where Caligula actually is. Okay, Whew. this is a fucking long story. Um, so Sarah, with Marcus in her head, flies to Capri. Uh, at this point in time, um, it's discovered that um, Rutger's lover, Andrew, um, whom Rutger introduced to porn photography, because Andrew's a photographer, has been commissioned to travel to the super yacht with the most famous porn actress in the world, this woman called Anna, um, and Caligula, under the guise of the Saudi prince, wants them to do some photo shoots and then get them to make a porno film. Um, we get uh, the kind of back and forth between Andrew and Anna, and then ultimately what happens is Andrew is drugged, um, Anna is made to have sex with him while he's paralysed, uh, Caligula measures their dicks, cuts Andrew's dick off, but keeps them both alive and is torturing them. So Rutger comes to um, Capri to try and find his lover, Andrew. At this point, he is staying in the same hotel as Sarah. They meet at a dinner in which Khalid, a.k.a. Caligula, is also invited. Um, Andrew introduces them. Marcus realises Khalid is Caligula and... Uh, then they kind of get Rutger to um, get in on the um, action of trying to destroy Caligula. Uh, Anna does this by touching his hand and using her psychic powers to tell him all about his first homosexual experience. Okay, so they get invited onto the ship for a special party, at which point um, Rutger uses his knowledge of the super yacht they go down into the basement of this ship where the torture room is. They find Anna uh, by Sarah touching a bungee cord that has some blood on it. She also realises what happened to Andrew. Um, Caligula, aka Khalid, realises what's going on, comes down, uh, shoots Andrew. Marcus takes over Sarah's body. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that fact. When Sarah's asleep, Marcus can use her body. So there is that fucking aspect going to. Marcus takes over um, Sarah's body. There is a little bit of like ninja fighting. Um, Caligula throws Sarah into the ocean. Uh, the porn actress who has been rescued uh, smacks Caligula in the back of the head with a camera tripod. Caligula falls into the ocean. Sarah drowns him. Caligula dies. Uh, Sarah dies. Sarah is revived, the cancer is gone, Marcus is gone, Sarah doesn't remember anything that happened, it was all a fucking dream, and there you go. That's pretty much the entire story of Caligula reincarnated. Was this a bad book? Kind of. Did I hate it? No, I, I didn't. It was a fun read. And I would uh, look into more Steve Peek books and uh, see what else he's written. Um, it was an interesting story. I like the Caligula angle. I like the fact that the timeline jumps around a lot. Uh, that it's not a static kind of beginning, middle, end uh, story. But fuck me, were there some hoops you had to jump through as a reader in order to kind of get to the bottom of everything. And the character of Sarah is one of the worst fucking characters I have ever read in any novel. <clears throat> like, give this girl a fucking break. The torture scenes, um, 
They're well written, but I've actually read more graphic stuff, especially from some of the rock and roll horror authors that came out of Britain in the 1980s. Authors like James Herbert, uh, Sean Hudson, fuck even Garth Marenghi. Get that reference. Um, so it wasn't particularly graphic. Um, there weren't any parts of this book that made me feel uh, ill or queasy, which a good horror book uh, often usually does. Um, but all in all, Caligula reincarnated, shit fucking book publishing, interesting enough story, um, yeah, nothing more to say, I, guilty pleasure, I did enjoy most of it, so there you go. With that said, uh, I just want to leave you all with some... Words of advice, read a fucking book, people.